Hi, and welcome to the Down Under Dyer podcast, episode five. My name's Mel, and I'm a knitter, hand dyer, and occasional crocheter living in Sydney, Australia. And this is my podcast where I talk about all the crafty things I've been up to. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook as Down Under Dyer, all one word, and you can find my store on Etsy as Down Under Dyer. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, I love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below. In the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional cu uh, custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to lands, sea, and community. I pay my respect to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. Uh, okay, so what a fun one we have for you this month. Um, as you may or may not know, um, we're currently in an extended lockdown here in Sydney. Um, it's become quite restrictive over the last few days with the case numbers soaring through the roof a little bit. Uh, today, the latest, which is Monday, the 12th of July, um, the case numbers were over 100 new cases, which is a little bit terrifying. Um, so if you're not in Australia, you probably are not aware of the fact that our vaccination rates here are extremely low. Our rollout has been very, very slow with the vaccination. Um, and so um, for me, for my age group, for example, I'm not even eligible to receive a vaccine yet. So I can't, um, I can't get one. Well, technically the government did announce a few weeks ago that we could request the AstraZeneca vaccine in any age group now. Um, however, the chief medical officer then went on to tell us all that we shouldn't and the advice had changed, the healthcare advice had, had not changed uh, and that it really wasn't recommended for people under the age of 60. So uh, I probably at this stage will not be getting the AstraZeneca vaccine if I can avoid it. Um, yeah. And so they keep extending the lockdown for a week at a time, um, but I don't think it's likely to let up anytime soon with the, the case numbers that we've had today. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit tough, I guess. Um, in my day job, I actually work from home anyway, and I have been doing that since COVID, uh, before, since March last year. Um, when we were all sent down, sent home from the office after a COVID scare since then, I haven't actually returned back to the office. Um, and obviously my dyeing is done in my studio here at home as well. Um, and I record the podcast at home. So all of those things for me are about the same as they always have been. Um, and my store is operating the same as well because it's an Etsy store. So I don't actually sell to people in person. Um, and on the plus side, it means I've had time to get stuck into working on the colors for my advent calendars because all my weekend plans have been canceled. Um, and I'm really happy with what I've come up with. I'm very excited. I wish I could share them with you, but it's a surprise. So we're gonna have to wait a few more months at least. Um, the other thing that I've been doing since lockdown started is I've been sewing. I pulled my old sewing machine out, which is actually my mum's old sewing machine. It's a hand-me-down. Um, it's a old 1970s, I think, faff. Um, and yeah, it's a nice, slow, stony machine that I am very familiar with. And I've been sewing some face masks and some project bags. So I am hoping to actually have some project bags in the store by the end of this month. Um, but we'll see. I'll, I've got a few prototypes that I can show you today, actually. Um, and I also decided that the last episode that I recorded was just far too long. Um, it took such a long time to get it onto the computer and then edit it, upload it to, e uh, to YouTube um, and get the subtitles working. And so I'm trying to, um, I'm going to try out shorter episodes. I'm probably also going to try to do them a little bit more frequently than once a month um, and I'll see how I go. Um, if you have any thoughts or opinions on that though, I'd love to hear it. So again, as always, please leave a comment below. Uh, okay, so let's move on to finished objects. And the first thing that I have finished is the Skipworth mitts, but I'm going to have to put a picture of them on the screen uh, because I have already given them to their new owner, um, who's my friend Karen. 
Um, so I don't know, I think I mentioned it in, my, in the last episode, but basically Karen and I kind of decided on a bit of a skill, shop, a skill swap. She is good at amigurumi crochet, sorry about that. And I am not good at amigurumi crochet, but I dye my own yarn and I have knitted a pair of the mitts that she was quite, she liked a lot before. So we decided to swap. So she made me this adorable little amigurumi cat. So cute. Love it so much. Um, and so, um, yeah, I feel like that was a pretty good deal. Um, and I'm pretty excited about him. He'll probably be featuring in some of my uh, photos on my Instagram and my shop update photos from time to time as well. Um, yeah, so what else have I finished? I haven't actually finished anything since the last episode. I was so sure I was going to at least finish Dave's sweater, uh, but unfortunately I still haven't finished it. I have, I have now finished the back and the front and I've started seaming those together. Uh, and I've started on the first sleeve. I think I'm about halfway through the first sleeve. I was hoping to get a whole lot more done last in the weekend that just passed. Um, but unfortunately, my right neck, which is the weirdest name for the injury that I have on my neck, um, was playing up pretty badly. And I had to stop knitting. I had to stop using my mobile phone. Uh, Anything that had me kind of looking slightly, like with my head slightly tilted like this down um, was completely out of the question. I couldn't even cook dinner because I couldn't stand in a position that was comfortable. Um, and so I was, yeah, it was, it was really uncomfortable. I had to have a heat pack on it all weekend. Um, and I'm hoping to see the physio about it tomorrow. But anyway, uh, so that kept me from doing knitting basically for the whole weekend and also dyeing, sewing all of it uh, so I guess I was forced my body forced me to take a little bit of a break um, which is always welcome I guess uh, but the other thing that I received that is a finished object that I didn't finish um, was this gorgeous blanket from my friend Ben uh, knitted out of my damn under dyer yarn so he offered to knit this as a sample for me um, and I need to get some photos of it now um, but yeah, it's this gorgeous big blanket. Uh, I can't remember the name of the pattern, so I'll have to put it in the show notes and also I'll probably put it up on the screen as well. Um, and this is in five different colors of my hand dyed yarn. Um, and they look really gorgeous together. So I'm really happy to have a sample, um, to share, which I will... Um, and you can see it's got that gorgeous saffy color, which I'm knitting the sweater out of. Um, so yeah, I'll have some photos to put up of this on my website and everything. And then I will probably return it back to Ben to keep because he was so lovely to knit it. Uh, so, okay. So then on to my works in progress. And uh, as I already explained, I have finished the front and back of this, the, um, uh, jump up jumper in my down under dyer yarn it's the eight ply merino in the saffy colorway um, and I've started seaming it so I've done the top seams and I've done one of the side seams um, but I haven't done the other side seam and Dave tried this on and it fits really well so I'm really happy with how it's coming along the um, I've shown you guys a few updates, but the colors are looking really nice. Um, yeah, so that's, I feel like I'm, I'm on the home stretch with that now. Um, there's the sleeve. Um, but I, with my neck the way it is, I just don't know how much more I'm going to get done this week. I really need to get on and done with it though because I've been accepted for a test knit. Um, I wanted to do some more test knitting this year as kind of one of my goals that I'm setting for myself because um, I've only ever done one test knit and I think it's a good skill to have. 
Um, but I really want to get this out of the way first so I don't have too many projects on my needles. Um, but yeah, I just I just got accepted for another test knit and that one is due on the 31st of August and it is a sweater for me. Um, and I'm going to be knitting that out of my own yarn uh, down under Daya in my dusky aubergine color, which is a new color coming to the shop. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a sample to show you this week, but I'm hoping to show you what it looks like next episode. Um, and I might even be able to show you like a little sneak preview of some of how it knits up as well. Um, but yes, coming soon. Uh, what else have I been knitting on this month? So I continued to work on the um, Ocean Drive socks. So I've finished the pink on the second. So this is the second sock. The first one I've already showed earlier, which is finished, which is here. And then this is the second one and just started the green on that one. So um, I got tested for COVID last week and I was knitting on these while I was waiting for my test. But fortunately or unfortunately, they were very efficient. So I didn't get very much time to knit. Um, and uh, yep, so those socks were, those socks are also in Down Under Dyer. That's my own yarn brand in the um, highlighter pastel set um, so that that's a set of five mini skeins and I'm just I'm using four colors of, of the highlighter colors and then I'm just using one sort of natural undyed color um, as the contrast um, yeah so then the next thing that I've been knitting on which is a constant battle um, is my Jaska hat which I'm making as well for Dave um, he so I've made you can see where the progress keeper is it's just there so I've probably added a, about an inch to the hat since the last episode um, it's getting fairly long now we've also kind of um, had a little bit of a discussion and agreed that I'm probably going to take about an inch off the total length of the hat uh, because of the way that he wants to wear it just so that I can get through it a little bit more quickly um, so I don't I haven't actually checked how many centimeters I have more to knit straight up in the one by one twisted rib but I think it's still probably I'm past the halfway point now which is the main thing um, and yeah so that's the Jaska hat and that's in my uh, deep olive colorway and then the last thing I've been knitting on this month, again, I don't think I've made that much progress, um, is my second one of these pastel unicorn main socks. So they've just done the cuff and about a little bit over an inch on the second sock. The first sock is already done. And they're in my lovely sparkly base. You can see shining there. Um, yeah, I've got I've got heaps of yarn left. I'm definitely going to get more than a pair of socks out of these, which I'm completely fine with. Um, I was also thinking that I might make these these socks a gift for someone, but we'll see. Because I'm quite they're growing on me now. I kind of almost want to keep them for myself a bit. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's all of my works in progress that I can show you at the moment. Um, there are a few more to works in progress that I have, but that I haven't actually just had time to pick up and knit on this month. Um, I think it's only been, I don't know if it's been a full month since the last episode and I like with my neck being injured and just the lockdown and everything. I don't know. It's just felt a bit crazy. I haven't, somehow I have felt more busy, not less busy since lockdown started um, so I haven't done as much knitting as I had hoped but we'll get there uh, all right so that's everything that I have been working on or finished um, and I just wanted to talk a little tiny bit about future knitting um, so like I said I'll be I have been accepted for that test knit and I am going to uh, work on that sweater for me next um, but I'm also hoping that I'll get some more of these things off 
for needles pretty soon and I'm hoping to also cast on the Le Pouf cardigan. Um, so this is something that's been in my queue to make for ages and ages and ages for myself. Um, it's a pattern by, I can't remember the lady's name, but it's the woman from Hedgehog Fibers. And um, it's a fade cardigan with puffed sleeves. Um, and I, I love it. Obviously, it's been in my queue for ages. It's actually the reason that I started dyeing yarn in the first place because getting hedgehog fibers during the pandemic in Australia was really hard. Um, and actually still continues to be difficult. And I decided that if I couldn't buy them, I guess I would give them, give making them myself a go. Um, but then in the end, I actually ended up buying some La Bien Aime yarn to make it with. So I'm going to be making it in a gray to green fade set with pink speckles all the way through. Um, and I'm really excited to see it. So I decided on the skeins that I'll be using and I am hoping to cast it on as soon as I get the sweater, Dave's John Buck sweater off the needles. Um, yeah, I also told him I won't be knitting him another sweater for a while. Okay, so on to stash enhancement. And I don't have a lot to show this week because I have imposed, I have self-imposed a yarn diet for the month of July. So for July, I have decided I'm not going to buy any new yarn. But I had a few arrivals at the end of last month and the beginning of this month that I purchased last month. So I'm going to share them with you today. So the first thing is from a de-stash site. Um, oh, that's upside down. And so I bought some of this, I bought 11 skeins of this Jamison's yarn, um, the Shetland Spindrift. I've been wanting to try it out for a while and it's not that easy to get in Australia. So when someone was selling it on a, a, a Aussie de-stash site, I was really fast to pick it up, especially because it's this lovely green. I'm a big fan of green. Uh, so I'm hoping to do a colorwork sweater with it with some other non-superwash yarns. Um, I might even try and get some more Jamisons in a different color, but we'll see. Uh, and then the other thing is a Knit Picks order. So I've, I haven't brought all of it with me, but um, I got three different things, different kinds. So I got Comfy, which is their fingering weight cotton acrylic blend um, in the blackberry color, which is this deep purple. And that's so that I can try and knit a, um, a sweater from the collection that I bought last month by Skein Deer. Um, and that will be a summer. It's, it's more like a t-shirt really, um, but that'll be a summer knitting project for me. Um, and I also bought this Curio, which is 100% cotton in, oh, come on, there we go. Um, so this is 100% cotton in the, where does it say the color? There we go, Hollyberry, um, which is a really gorgeous, deep burgundy color. Uh, it's quite like, I. it's crochet cotton. Um, it's, it's a thread. It feels like it would be probably lace weight. I'm probably going to hold it. I'm hoping that I'll be able to hold it double to get gauge on something. If not, I might end up de-stashing it. Or I could, I could actually hold it triple because I got three balls of it. Um... And it's 720 yards, I guess that would probably be in the high 600 meters um, per ball. So yeah, I'm hoping that I'll be able to make another t-shirt out of that. And then I got a bunch of palette. Mm, there. So palette is um, knit, oh, and all these are from Knit Picks, I'm sorry, I didn't say that before. Um, so palette is there a fingering weight, non-superwash wool, uh, which comes in a huge variety of different colors, hence the name palette. Um, and it's basically like, it's basically Knit Picks color work yarn of choice. Um, and so I got, 
a couple of sweater quantities and then a couple of contrast colors um, during the summer sale because it was like it was on sale for a really good price and I've been wanting to dry it for ages um, and I bought enough to get free shipping as well so yeah um, and when I was while I was at it I got this free enamel pin um, because I spent over whatever the amount was so yeah that's all my stash, stash acquisitions for oh actually that's not true there's one other stash acquisition for the month which is a pattern set uh, so um, Mana I'm sorry I think it's Maria or Mana I'm not sure Gilligan who's known as an uh, Catine Big um, which is the Irish name for the little small cat um, uh, I, she, she did a pattern book called Cat Knits a while ago and I have the actual physical book um, and I haven't knit anything out of it but I'm planning to um, but I was kind of disappointed to find that that book didn't have any socks in it and I really like her sock patterns anyway so she's just released a book of socks called Choose Your Own Cat Sock Adventure um, and it has five I think different pat sock patterns in it uh, it could be six actually I will mention that in the show notes um, and yeah I, I saw it and I kind of decided I must have it um, and so I bought it when she first released it um, and it's an ebook so I printed it out myself because I wanted to have a physical copy and yeah there are lots of cute patterns in here and it's actually it's got a pretty good reference section on um, sock making in general so if you want to learn more about sock construction in color work in particular then I think this is probably a really good reference for you because um, it talks about the different heel types and how to do different things and how to measure your feet for making socks that fit you um, and then a whole lot of other techniques around sock making um, yeah and so I'm really excited about getting on and making a pair of these uh, Dave has already requested the starlight catties um, which look like that so there's a little row of cats here um, but maybe they can be a Christmas present we'll see so uh, I also bought some beautiful um, scrappy Rolags, I think they're called, Frankenbats, Franken Rolags, I'm going to put that in the description as well, uh, from 11T1 Windmills, who I bought some um, fiber from last month as well, um, and I'm hoping, I forgot to bring them with me today, so I will stick a picture up if I can. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm actually going to share some spinning videos on my Instagram sometime next week. So if you're interested in spinning content, follow me on Instagram for hopefully video content. Uh, it all just depends on how my neck is going. Cause again, spinning requires me to look down, which is a little bit painful at the moment. Um, but you know, maybe my physio will magically fix everything tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, okay, so on the last episode, I announced a competition and today I've done a random draw or actually that's not true. So to explain, I announced uh, or I added a note on the blog last weekend. So not the weekend that just finished yesterday, but the one before that saying I was planning on drawing that competition last weekend. And I did. And I actually recorded the podcast last weekend as well. But I was very unhappy with how the podcast came out and decided that I had to re-record it. Uh, but this is the first time that I've had a chance to do that since. So uh, the winner of the competition is Julie Hall. I'll put the little spinning animation in to show the selection now. So Julie, you've won a jewel box mini set of my hand dyed yarn on my sparkle sock base. Um, if you could send me a message either on Ravelry or Instagram, um, I can arrange to post you your prize. Thanks to everyone who entered. Um, I'm like, I'm blown away by how many people entered. Um, 
and I'm working on another competition which will be a knit along um, which I'm going to be announcing later on this year and I already have some of the prizes for that so I'm very excited um yeah okay everyone sorry about that my battery died and unfortunately I am waiting on a replacement or I'm, I'm waiting on a spare battery which I ordered um, a month ago and I'm not expecting to receive it until next month so um, I had to go and quickly charge this one before I could continue and now the light has changed and probably the angle of the camera has changed so apologizing uh, apologies if that's jarring for you um, so let's talk about shop updates. So my most recent shop update was on Tuesday the 6th of July um, at 6 p.m. And that was on both my Etsy and Square site. Um, that was last week. So there's quite a lot still um, available from that shop update. So I encourage you to check it out. There'll probably be another shop update towards the end of this month, which is again July. Um, but I haven't decided on the day yet because I need to see how I'm going with this injury. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the last Tuesday, but yeah, as I said, we'll see how it goes. Um, so here are some things that were in my shop updates and new colors, um, that I wanted to share with you. Um, so yeah, the first one is this duck egg blue, which is a light pardon me a light blue gray with um, a gentle spattering or speckling of browns um, to look like a duck egg I think it's very pretty I can't wait to see what people make with it and the other colorway that I have is called in the vineyard and this is a more heavily speckled color um, it's on the natural colored base with speckles of greens, turquoises, um, magentas, and purples. So kind of reminds me of leaves and grapes. Um, so yeah, there are still some of both of those colorways in my store as well as many other things. Um, and there'll be more of in the vineyard in particular coming to the shop update at the end of the month. Um, uh, as always, if you want a custom order, please send me a message directly um, via, gosh, any of the contact methods really. I, I monitor all of them um, to talk about custom orders, preferably uh, four or more skeins. Um, and I can give you a quote for that and, and a time frame as well. Um, especially like with sweater quantities because it's unusual for me to have a lot of sweater quantities in my store updates so if you're after a sweater quantity please reach out. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly before we end the episode is advent calendars. So advent calendar pre-orders were available uh, went up of, uh, at the blah, blah, blah. advent calendars went up for pre-order at the end of last month and they're still available. There are still some pre-orders left in the shop um, these are only available via my Square site uh, because, well, various reasons, but mostly it's hard for me to get email contact information for people on Etsy. And it's also hard to set it up with Etsy to have the shipping for an order in December. So um, I decided to use Square because I have a little bit more control over all of those things. Um, the advent calendars are only available to customers in Australia this year because it's my first year doing it and I'm doing really limited quantities. Um, if you want one and you'd prefer to pay by PayPal, that's not available on my Square site, but I can invoice you directly. So again, please reach out to me uh, on any of the contact methods and I can sort that out with you. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, if you have already pre-ordered and you chose to make it in two separate payments, um, you should get an email this coming week with instructions on how to make the second payment. So that's everything I have to share with you this week. Uh, whether you're a new or returning viewer, thanks for watching. Um, you can find links to everything I've spoken about in this episode in the description box below. Please like and comment on this episode if you enjoyed it. It helps other people find the podcast. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to get notifications about new episodes. I look forward to chatting again soon. Bye.